What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to this week's episode of Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and this is my old man, Rolly. And today, we're going to crack open what, Daddy-o? Chris Pino Grigio. Pino Grigio. And talk about uh, some watches, both new and vintage. So let's do it. All right, before we jump into the topics ahead, a quick wristwatch check. What are you wearing, Daddy-o? Uh, another week in a row, GMT. Eh? Yeah. It matches your shirt. It matches the shirt. In a way. I love this watch. Oh, it's such a beautiful watch. And yeah. more and more people are asking me to find them, and they are getting harder and harder to find. People are just holding on to Really? Them. It's not a watch people want to flip. People want to own it. I've been asked recently about the fade. Oh, uh, it, it someone had, asked you? A, a couple of times. That's so funny. And I've, I've told them the story about yeah. how I considered changing the, uh, the, the, the bezel. Yeah. Meanwhile, the faded bezel is so significantly more desirable. And you the, know? Yeah. And the Tourneau guys were like, Sure, we'll change it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm wearing something uh, also old and, and, and worn out a little bit. Uh, a vintage day date, reference 1803. I love uh, this watch. Don't you love? Do you like? Are you, how do you feel about the bracelet? It, it's really grown on me. Yeah. From the time that you that you've that, yeah. you, that you've you know that you've had this uh, you acquired this watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I actually have no issue wearing a watch like that well anymore. it's something that at I one point to, you probably you would have reversed to it but now no, I mean completely uh, it's pretty awesome com- completely uh, yeah in the realm of okay yeah I, I, yeah. I frankly I love the uh, I love the vintage you know models I love the stretch of the bracelet yeah I, I think it's it's worn in I, I don't know I, I think that the vintage models are less douchey than the modern models. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love both, but I think that the vintage, you know, is a little bit easier to wear. Uh, okay, so I, I, we always do it. I bring the watches, you bring the wine. That's what right. are we drinking, Daddy-o? Well, I just mentioned before, we're drinking some Cris Pinot Grigio yep. from Della Venezia region, okay. from the Veneto, yep. right above uh, above Venice, yep. right? The, from the, the Dolomite Mountains. And uh, this is a real oh, solid. Mountains, are, are they in Italy? or uh, they, In Italy, yeah, okay. yeah. And they, I guess they would border probably... Uh, Austria, but it's northern Italy, yeah. and, and Pinot Grigio really thrives there. Okay, and they say that Pinot Grigio, gr- Grigio meaning gray, but these grapes are not gray. Right? Yeah, they're isn't that beautiful funny? green, and the wine, when made right, is a wonderful wine. You gotta wonder why. I mean, they could have. I, I, I don't know. What, what kind of weather does Pinot Grigio thrive in? Well, honestly, it, it thrives more in a cooler, cooler climate. Maybe it's the gray skies that Perhaps. they thrive in. You yeah. know, maybe it's the yeah. Pinot that thrives in the yeah. you know gray skies. Who, 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 who knows? Who knows? I mean, maybe someone out. Maybe someone in the teenage watch fam knows. But we, we can get someone down below saying, "You fucking morons! It's because of the gray." Let me let me pour you a little bit. Yeah. And um, I uh, actually poured myself a little bit already. <laughs> So far be it from you to not get started a little bit <laughs> because uh, you know, I can't wait. And uh, let me put this down. Mm-hmm. Salute. Salute. All right. All right. That's a really nice Very crisp. Wine. It's, it's delicious. crisp. It's crisp. It's lean. It's racy. Yeah. Beautiful it's fruit. Really tasty. Citrusy. Yeah. They say that even a little bit of, of an almond note. Okay. I can't, little, can't yeah. say the almond. But. Yeah. But nice wine. And it's a perfect wine to talk about these watches. Delicious. So, um, I, I brought a couple of really cool watches. Um, one that we just listed in the watch shop. This is something that... I, I, I just talked about this, right? Yeah. Talk about residual value in watches. Mm-hmm. This watch, if you bought it retail, you took a bath on. Mm-hmm. It's a $21,000 watch, mm-hmm. okay? It's a Parmigiani Tonda 1950. Um, it is pre-owned some of the best value in the watch world. And I challenge anyone to debate me. Okay. Second hand, you can get these between eleven and thirteen thousand yep. uh, dollars. And and I, first of all, I want your first impressions, and then I'll get into why technically it's such a wonderful watch. So my first impression, at at, at a quick glance, it it it, it evokes that m- memory of of, of uh, my eighteen fifteen pink gold, some pink gold, very simple. Yep. With and then the, the, and then then you begin to see the the the, the, the well the similarities, but then the dissimilarity, yep. right? And um, the it's face a little bit bigger. It, it's a, yeah. This is yours is a thirty six, which I love the size of a thirty six. Yeah. This is a forty. Yeah. Uh, or I, I'm sorry, actually thirty nine. Technically speaking, um, the lugs are flared. It is also cased in pink, like yours was. Yes. Um, the dial is not white, but mm-hmm. rather cream. It's cream. Yeah. Which to me is a wonderful touch with white 
with sword white hands. luminous hands. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. That that's an interesting play, man. And what I think is really great too, if you look at the sub dial, it's it's on a different plane. It's a little below the mm -hmm. dial. Yes, but it's like I don't know. So um, it adds such depth in the, in the, in the simplest you know way. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't obstruct the dial at all, which is what you find in sub dials most often. That uh, I, I don't know, maybe it's the depth or it's the coloring or the or the texture that really breaks up the dial. Um, I, I think this is one of the most phenomenal watches you've ever offered. Again, at $21,000, maybe it's worth it. I'm not saying it's not worth it, but it's a disaster of an idea, considering the fact you can get it for 12, you know, give or take. Um, now, the movement is really special here. Um, it's a hand-finished movement with wonderful, not just decoration, but architecture. Mm -hmm. What you'll notice here is that the watch is actually an automatic watch, but the rotor is not a full rotor like you'd find in your Rolex, mm -hmm. um, or, but, but it's a micro-rotor. It's a micro-rotor, okay? So the rotor itself is mini and fit into the flat plane of the movement as opposed to laid on top. Interesting. So yeah. this has been made popular yeah. um, by um, by Universal Genève, okay. by Patrick Philippe in certain instances. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful movement. And again, 12 grand, you know, give or take. I, well, I don't know we have it listed on the site, somewhere in, in 11, I believe. No, I really don't remember, but 11 and change. I know we undercut market value. I, I, I looked on Car24, I said, okay, let's, let's, let's get this watch a really great home and let's undercut some guys. So that's what we did, uh, but wonderful watch. And it's an Hermes alligator strap, which is gorgeous. It's a beautiful, I tried that watch on a few days ago. Yep. It fits like a glove. Yep. It's beautiful. And again, that's a, that's a, a, a larger size face for guys that don't want to wear the 36 millimeter. 39? 39, with, is, it's perfect. With man. those flared lugs yeah. too. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think that we have two other incredible watches, incredible in different ways. Um, but this was without a doubt, Technically, from a technical watch geek perspective, one of the best watches we've listed in the teenage shop in a long time. Seriously, I mean, since your Longa, probably. Yeah. You know, your Longa is we listed that two years ago, and that was a masterpiece of watchmaking. Right. You know. Now we got two amazing vintage Rolexes. Uh, this is a date date reference 1803 with a Spanish wheel, which is why I brought it to you. Yes. I know uh, you like Spanish things. I do. <laughs> after all, I'm Spanish. After all. After, after all. <laughs> Uh, and, then a, and then a vintage Air King. You know, this this watch to me, it's a beautiful vintage Air King with a blue dial. But why I want to talk about this watch... Oh, by the way. Yep. It's Viernes. Viernes. Oh, hey, we're drinking. <laughs> the Air King, right? Look at this watch. Yeah. Does this watch scream sports watch to you or dress watch to you? I think sports watch. For you, that's so... Because of the bracelet? To me, I could see being on a, on a boat with this guy yeah. riding okay. a nice little boat. But... It's no, also, no, 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 that's a great perspective, no, I mean. Right, but I can see how, and, I, and, and I've and i seen guys wear the, this watch yep. with suits, and, and, and they completely wear it as a dress watch. Right. Uh, in fact, you, you probably see a lot more of this uh, around with this all stainless, right. you know. It's a, it's a really versatile watch. But it is versatile, yeah. I think that because of the size and thinness, people tend to think of it as a dress watch. I ah, personally think of it as a sports watch, personally, yeah, yeah. but most people go dress with it, right? Yeah. But what's so cool about these vintage Air Kings, and I was just talking to a client about this yesterday, the history really is so rich and so surprising to so many watch geeks, right? The Air King was part of a series, Air Lion was another one, um, that was uh, invented to commemorate British Royal Air Force, right? Mm. The, if Rolex wanted the mm. Air, whatever it would be, inevitably the Air King, to be the watch for, for, the, for the Royal Air Force, you know? So, I mean, this was the King of the Air, you know? And now if you talk about watch you know, history and, and everything like that, you know, Pilot's watches ended up being these monstrosities, yes. you know, and for good reason, it's a good tool. But it's funny that the Air King, a watch that so many people... Airplane. But really, this watch has just as much claim to that, you know, heritage of, of you know, uh, uh, the sky, you know, and, and being a tool of the sky than, uh, than anything. And I think that's, that's really charming. And it's a blue dial Rolex, which, forget the history, throw it all in the trash if you want. The watch is f***ing gorgeous, everything else aside. You know, 1972. I love it. 1972. Yeah. 72. It, it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful face. I know. That, it, that it, blue is it's just... Blue is almost like a... Per, like a, a t 
hint of purple. Well, you know what's, what I always say about these blue Rolex styles, and this is why they're the most desirable Rolex styles, it, basically in, in the world, or some of the most desirable Rolex styles in the world, is because Rolex blue changes with the light. You know, like, you know, <laughs> I, you, know who I'm, you know who I'm referencing? The Mercedes cars, that the more expensive colors had the double colors. Like the blues that would look purple yes. in certain light, yes. and the brown that would look this. Yes. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. It was like Mercedes like, would charge you an extra 1500 right. bucks. That's right. You know, and, and we knew someone that had that blue e coupe, right? That it was blue, but in certain light, the freaking thing was purple. Remember that? Yes. And this, these Rolexes, although maybe born a true color, have evolved into this beautiful, you know, changing kind of color. I find that incredibly true. Yeah, that's pretty cool. When, when we were kids, we used to have those metallic paints too, that had the blue. If you had a, a, a an old bicycle with the big wheel in the back yeah. and stuff, he used to rock really cool handlebars. Those those colors were, and and that was the seventies. It, it was the seventies. So really, it, this watch was yeah, just born. It, it does. It, it it reminds me a lot of that. Believe it. And or not. you were the chubby yeah. Spanish kid with the high I handlebars. Was a chubby Spanish kid with the handlebars like this. Put a yeah. photo of Rolly as a kid up on the screen. I'll send it to you. <laughs> but uh, but that's it. I, I don't know, guys. For me, Friday, it's about this. This is, and this is why Liquor Run ended up being such a fun series, successful series. Yeah, because uh, we're just chilling out, talking a little bit about watches, talking a little bit about, actually, talking your passion and my passion. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this series, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be, uh, to be on here <laughs> once a week, uh, because I don't know much about watches. I just like the aesthetic of watches. And you educate me every yeah. week in and week out. Yeah. I learn so much. Yeah. But I get to talk about what I love, which is wines, right? Mm -hmm. So so we bring the two passions together. Yeah. Uh, and it makes and it infectious. It, 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 it's so cool, man. You so. know, I mean, to, like, you know, you know, it sounds funny, right? Like, like I, I, I love work. I love answering emails, right? Yeah. I love do, I love, pa no, 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 it is funny. I mean, I complain about it because it, it does get stressful, but ultimately I, I love those things, right? But just like anyone, you ultimately, I know it sounds funny, even though I'm talking about watches all day, to me to crack open a bottle of wine with my old man and Anna, and to, to have a fun or a couple of cool watches in front of me, no matter where the conversation goes to, and it could go to it could go to growing up in Brooklyn, it can go to, you know, riding horses when you were a kid, talking about that earlier before. Just to have these things in front of me, yeah. like in the middle of a conversation, I just like holding them and, and admiring them and thinking about them and, and thinking about like, oh, your story actually was happening when this was made. I mean, right. that's really like why even in my off time, my even in my way off time, it just comes back to watches and just enjoying enjoying the passage of time with these awesome little things. I know you have one more note. As long as our viewers have been tuning in and patronizing the channel, yep. right, and, and giving a support, there's one thing that I've always said that if you don't know much about a wine, there's one thing you can start with, and it's always what? The, the importer. The importer, the, yeah. The importer, right, the importer. Yep. So, once again, this is a really nice wine. I want to give I want to give this wine a plug, because this wine, it's a $10 bottle of wine. It's a really, really good Pinot Grigio. It's delicious. It's delicious. Yep. It really is delicious. And it's hard to find good Pinot Grigio at this price point. And, and maybe it's $11. Maybe I paid an extra, an extra buck more, but... I, you know, when you think Pinot Grigio, everybody automatically thinks uh, Santa Margarita. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with Santa well, it's Margarita. it's a more expensive bottle, too. It's a more expensive bottle. I think it's inflated because of the name and brilliant marketing. I don't necessarily know if, if the if the price warrants the wine, but you when you've got a wine like this, yeah. it, it's unheralded. Yeah. Okay, and... And, um, and do they get a lot of attention, this Chris? They don't get as... You don't really see... I love when I see this on a wine list. Yeah. Because it tells me, hey man, someone's paying attention. That's cool. And and uh, and they know that this is a really good wine yep. at a great price. But what my my initial put, what my point was, Leonardo Locasio yep. selections. Leonardo Locasio, just like it was Skernik, Jorge Ordonez. right? Jorge Ordonez, Louis Dresner, you know, the Thierry Thies, Eric Solomon. These are people that de have dedicated their lives. To finding great wine, doing all the the hard work for you, and bringing it to this country. and bring it to this country. It's awesome. So, it's the it's the most awesome cheat sheet 
All right, Dan, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Pleasure. As you do every, every Friday. This is so awesome. Uh, guys, if you want to take a look at any of these watches, check them out in the watch shop at theoandharris.com. Uh, they've all been just listed. And uh, check out this bottle of Chris. And let's hear your recommendations down below in the description. Co comments. Salute. Salute.